Good evening for everybody. Unfortunately, approaching the summer, springtime, and the general experiences of mine that uh, if we are approaching the better weather, decrease the visiting rate on the on the course. During the fall time, week by week increase, and recently the trend of different opposite. Okay. So, in the first two occasions, but fortunately I uh, prepared uh, video records and everybody able to watch during one week and whole of the, whole of the season. Anyway, but it's a little bit, uh, to, my, uh, to my opinion, uh, much better uh, communicate directly a little bit the same as I mentioned in the first occasion, like visiting a concert, uh, for example, a concert, or looking on the TV. Okay, anyway. Um, in the first two occasions, I tried to define the conceptual framework, conceptualize the history of formation of global economic system. In the last slide, on the last slide, in the last week, uh, I tried to demonstrate which are the most important categories of the global economic system. Uh, Fernand Brodel, who is uh, one of the most famous or the best historian of uh, 20th century defined the global economy with her two categories. The first one, Economie Mondiale, uh, quelques personnes parlent français, uh, people, there are people in the audience uh, speaking in French, French speakers. Okay, uh, because a little bit later I will show one short speech of Fernand Brodel, but it's uh, very uh, who learned at school French? Okay, help a lot, but not so complicated. Later, I will summarize. Uh, I will summarize the content of uh, his speech. Okay, Economy Mondiale, we can translate world economy. This is the global category. But the key concept, uh, world hyphen economy. Economy Mondiale, according to a uh, broader uh, concept. What mean Economy Mondiale? Economy Mondiale, basically, one integrated economic unit. Uh, in the 12th century, which is the birth century of global economic system, uh, six world economy existed on the world, according to Brother. The most developed China, the second one India, uh, third uh, Islamic uh, world, uh, Western and Central Europe was the fourth, uh, Amerindian culture, and finally Russia. The basic category of world economy definition, this was the last slide in the last week, the uh, area which demarcated well, we are able to define exactly the boundary of the economy world, uh, world economy. The second one, only one guiding city direct, all of the world economy. And the last one, uh, uh, economically hierarchical area. I have to mention, uh, for example, in Hungary, because I am quite aged, uh, therefore I lived in the socialist epoch in Hungary, and uh, uh, I lived uh, quite a long time in the new capitalism. Uh, and uh, in the date of uh, uh, change of, uh, of economic and political system, we believe deeply that Hungary will develop very quickly. It's not perfect. Develop, developed a little bit, but the speed, because the great ambition of the Hungarians, we would like to live on the same living standards like in Austria. And uh, uh, we was closest in the Austrian living standard in 1980, uh, 1938, the closest one. The living standards compared with Austria in Hungary was 69%. My guess, my first guess today, recently, the living standards compared with Austria, how many persons recently? 50. 50? Okay. 30. 30? 40. 40, okay. This is the difference. Why moving a lot of Hungaria to Austria, to Germany, to England? Yeah, this is the basic reason. Because the living standards, the salary, a lot of, lot of elements, basically different. 
basically different, and the Caesar is open. Uh, in, the, in Hungary, anyway, I don't want to speak too much about Hungary coming, uh, but Hungary during the 20th century happened nine, nine change of political system, nine, nine times, nine times. And each new political system declared we open a new age. We will develop very quickly and fail, fail. Two kind of uh, Hungarian politician, but I suppose you come from which country? Gabon. Cameroon. Cameroon. Okay, but this is the same situation, I'm sure, in Cameroon too. Two kind of politician: magician. I will rouse the GDP with my right hand. I'm able. This is the magician. And the second one, reformer, who declared that. Uh, decrease the, uh, for example, budget and, and save money and, and so on. Two kinds. And there is a cycle. Magician, reformer. Magician, reformer. And destroy the whole of the country. Okay, but turn back to the basic story. Uh, to the basic story. Uh, in the frame of global economy, no general economic development. Each element of economy and society and political system Global economy able to integrate, able integrate the slavery, able, able integrate feudalism, able integrate the capitalism, able integrate anything. No uh, equation, only integration, economic integration. And very important, the dynamic of global economy based on a differences in economic development, uh, development level. Therefore, there are core area, peripheral area and semi-peripheral area. Okay, look at one short speech of Fernand Rodin. Fernand Rodin is exceptional, a French uh, scholar. He was the most influential person whole of the 20th century. Look at the short speech. Unfortunately, French, but there is a subtitle and uh, help a lot, and later I will sum summarize the speech of him. Three volumes. The first volume uh, on the uh, 
uh, it's different on the point of view. On the uh, left, it summarizes the basic element of uh, creation and recreation of history, which are the most important. Construct the building, produce, uh, for example, uh, feed, food, sorry, uh, agriculture and, and uh, production of, uh, of beverage, different uh, beer, wine and uh, clean water, fresh water. Uh, this is the basic element. The basic construction of the human history. The creation and the recreation of everyday life. The second volume, uh, the second volume in the, in the right, the second volume about the trade. How possible change the surplus? The surplus. How function the trade and, and, uh, and uh, in different levels? Local trade, international trade, regional trade, different levels. And finally, uh, the third volume focuses the global construction. The title, Le Temps du Monde. Uh, time of, uh, of, uh, of word, we can translate. Uh, and translate it officially in the title of the third volume, the structure of, uh, structure of life, the structure of word, I don't know exactly, we will see. Le Temps du Monde. The global structure, the global system. Okay, jump back. The last concept, we have to define a concept of Europe. A concept of Europe. What mean Europe? Meaning of Europe changed a lot on the history. The first meaning of Europe, a myth, a Greek myth. Probably the majority of audience know the story, a uh, story of Zeus. Zeus was the head of a uh, company of, uh, of God and Goddess in uh, Greek mythology. He was the main person, the, the <clears throat> Head of this community, a second generation of God and Goddess. And uh, Zeus uh, abducted one girl, one princess, Phoenician princess, you know the Phoenicians? Phoenician great nation lived in the Mediterranean area. Uh, the Phoenician invented the money. Phoenician invented a lot of different versions of calculation. And very important, one nation, a rousing nation, abduction of women. In the history of, uh, uh, of uh, Rome, Roman Empire, for example, this was the abduction of Sabine women. This is the same history, abduction of Phoenician women. And very important, the form of abduction and the color of bull. It's white bull, it's exceptional. Why important? Because in the case of bull, no hand. Therefore, the bull had to communicate, speak a little bit, uh, with the princess and call, sit on the bank. It was a temptation. It's very, very uh, talented temptation. Okay, this is the first concept, Europe, Phoenician, a Phoenician princess. The second, a geographical concept. In the Greek geography, had three continents. The first continent, Europe, and very important peculiarity of Greek geography, that eastern boundary of Europe, in the geographical uh, view of Greek, Don River, not Ural Mountain, Don River. Until the Enlightenment, until the 18th century, each European map constructed the frame of Europe in eastward until the Don River, more thousand kilometers westward from Ural Mountain. The second continent, Asia, and the western boundary of Europe, pillars of Hercule, a god, uh, Hercule, god of, uh, of uh, Greek pantheon, and the uh, pillar of Hercule mean Gibraltar. Somebody know? Uh, why named Gibraltar, which is the etymological origin of Gibraltar. There is a, a Muslim origin. There is Muslim student in the audience? No? Oh. One. Uh, which Muslim origin do you know? <laughs> it's a, one of the one general of uh, Muslim army 
in the 7th century named Tariq. Tariq. And Tariq was the first person who passed on the Strait of Gibraltar. Therefore, it's named Rock of Tariq. Gibraltar. After, after his name. Okay. But in the Greek period, it was the pillar of Hercules. And the third continent which knew by Greek, Libya. It basically was Africa, but uh, a Greek sailor knew information about only about the northern part of Africa. In Europe, basically until the Middle Ages, until the Middle Ages and early modern time, used the Greek geography. Everybody in Europe, eastern boundary, Don River, western boundary, Gibraltar, Pillar of Hercules. But in the 18th century, started mapping whole of Europe. And in Russia, one Swedish officer and geographer mapped whole of European part of Russia and proposed it's not usable geographical boundary, Don River. Why? Because the classical uh, rivers without water regulation moving east, west, east, west, more than 10 kilometers. Moreover, it's not geological meaning a river because the bed of river, it's occasional. Therefore, proposed a new boundary moving to Europe. Therefore, only after the 18th century named the eastern, eastern boundary of, uh, of Europe, Ural Mountain. But generally accepted and recently this is the official, uh, official uh, eastern boundary. Okay, but the distance, the distance between Ural and Don River more than 1000 kilometers. Why interesting for us? Because during the traditional Europe, we are discussing Eastern Europe, Western Europe, Central Europe, the frame basically different. In the Middle Ages, Hungary was Eastern European country. Recently, Central European country, because the coordinate changed basically. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is the first unit, this, no, no pause in the, today's lecture, of course. But this is the first item. I will load it up to the call space, and you can see the uh, you can see the slides. Okay, look at the second chapter. The second chapter. Yeah, this is my name. Uh, Europe. We close the Europe. Only uh, in the case of Europe, necessary uh, to speak a little bit about the basic geographical peculiarity of Europe. Look at one short movie about it. What means Europe? Which kind of geographical landscape? Europe lies in the northern hemisphere and it is the second smallest continent. The only continent smaller is Australia. Asia, the largest continent, and Europe occupy the same landmass. The Ural Mountains form the boundary between the two. Russia, the largest country in the world, spans both continents. Europe is bordered by water. The Arctic Ocean to the north, the Atlantic Ocean to the west, and the Mediterranean, Black, and Caspian Seas to the south. Europe also includes many islands, including the British Isles and Iceland. Despite its small size, Europe is more densely populated than any continent except Asia. Most European countries are highly urbanized, and some of the most historic cities are found here. London, England, Paris, France, Rome, Italy, Berlin, Germany, Athens, Greece, and Moscow, Russia, to name a few. Humans have populated Europe for tens of thousands of years because it has a largely favorable geography. About a third of the continent is arable, or good for farming, a much higher percentage than on most other continents. And its northern forests offer ample timber resources. The climate is generally mild, in part because the warm Gulf Stream current flows from the Gulf of Mexico and along Europe's western coast. Large rivers course through the continent, providing important channels for transportation and trade. 
These rivers include the Danube, the Rhine, the Elbe, the Rhone, and Europe's longest river, the Volga. <coughs> except for the alpine mountain system that runs west to east. These mountains, the Carpathians, Balkans, Alps, and Pyrenees, form a natural barrier between northern and southern Europe. Northern Europe is cooler, wetter, and more heavily forested than the south. Scandinavia and northern Russia, both reaching above the Arctic Circle, have large stretches of permanently frozen subsoil called tundra. The south, sheltered from northern winds by the mountains, is drier and warmer. The Mediterranean region has a warm subtropical climate. The continent is commonly divided between eastern and western Europe. Many of the countries in eastern Europe, along with Russia, were once part of the Soviet Union. Russia is almost twice as large in area as the United States or China, stretching 4,800 miles along the Arctic Circle from Europe to the Pacific Ocean. It forms the entire northern border of Asia. While most of Russia's land area lies east of the Ural Mountains in Asia, most Russian people live on the European side. That's because Asian Russia, or Siberia, is one of the least hospitable places on Earth, with its long, severe winters and recorded temperatures of 90 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. South of the Arctic deserts and frozen tundra are vast, swampy flatlands called the taiga, which is also the world's largest forest zone. The taiga is a belt of mostly coniferous, or needle-bearing, evergreen trees, which begins in Scandinavia covers much of Siberia. The taiga is the primary source of Europe's timber. Unlike most of Europe, Russia is rich in mineral resources, especially oil, coal, natural gas, and iron. But rugged terrain, bitter climate, and great distances, especially in Siberia, have presented huge obstacles to collecting these resources. Much of Europe boasts fertile farmland and temperate climates. In addition, it also possesses great natural beauty thanks to its spectacular coasts and mountains. It is easy to see why this region has attracted people for thousands of years. Okay. Thanks a lot. This is a vision, very important. We have to be a vision about the region we are analyzing. Uh, look at Europe. Uh, the basic problem, uh, only one mention. Uh, on the last part of this uh, movie, show the great large forest area. I have to mention, in the traditional time, before Industrial Revolution, the function of fire uh, of timber was the same that recently the oil, the fossil fuel. Why? Because the timber, the wooden material, was the firewood, raw material for construction of buildings, raw material uh, for construction of ships. Therefore, if, so, if some country was able to control the production of timber, control the world like recently the Arabic country on the Arabian Peninsula. The firewood and timber and wooden material, raw material, was the key raw material of the traditional world. Okay, turn back, birth of Europe, uh, uh, Europe uh, as civilization. We have to mention, during the uh, Greek and the Roman history, the most important uh, candle, you know what means the candle? Candle, this is the, for example, this is the small uh, uh, construction for uh, swinging the baby. This is the candle. Okay. Uh, the candle of uh, civilization. Mediterranean Sea. Basically, the Greek colonies and the Roman Empire covered 
the coastal area of Mediterranean Sea. But after the collapse of Western Roman Empire started a new area, Europe became a continental civilization. The first question we have to, we have to find answer which is the starting date, the birth, not day, birth year, birth period of Europe. If we are looking at the history, the first potential uh, birth date of uh, formation of European civilization, invasion of Hans. The Hans, well-known nation, folks in the Chinese history too. Its name Xiong is good spelling. I'm not sure. No? You Chinese student? Oh. Yes. Xiong? No? Yes. Which is the correct spelling? Um, because this is the uh, this is the description according to European uh, yeah, alphabet. Xinu, Xiu, Xiu. Okay, thanks a lot. It's her. Uh, in Hungary, it's named in the European culture named Han, Han people. Very interesting. Han people probably was a Turkish nation, Turkish force. But recently, we know about the great Han Empire, only three words. Three, three words. Roman diplomats visited in the court of uh, Attila, king of Hans, and described the diary, the name of beverage, Han beverage. Three words. And Han expired, it disappeared, and the history, and the history and about the Hans saved only three words. Free beverage, alcohol in beverage, of course. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so demonstrate well that the history, how select information, how many information disappear about even about the great empire. Hans moved in the great step corridor from the great Chinese wall, West Wall. Uh, about Euro and Euro Asia, we have to mention. The geographical structure is very, very helpful. Why? In the small mo movie, uh, demonstrating this is Euro Asia. It's simplification. If, if we are looking by geographical structure, this is the tundra area. It's a quad step area. The second one, taiga area. It's a pine area. And the next one, uh, frondiferous forest area the steppe area and the desert area. Parallel, parallel biogeographical zone. Why important? Why useful? Because Chinese invention, for example, in the eastern part of Eurasia, very quickly proliferated whole of Eurasia. Why? Because not many people distribute. Very easy moving on the great step corridor. Eastward, westward, eastward, westward. More thousand kilometers per day able riding uh, the sentinels of nomadic people. It's unbelievable, great. Before uh, the uh, modern technology, the greatest speed performed by nomadic communication system. Okay. Turn back to the story. Uh, basically, each innovation very easy in Europe, from Europe to China, China to Europe, very easy and very quickly proliferated. Look at, for example, the case of Americas. The case of Americas. It's great simplification, but for example, this is the northern part of America, central part of America, and southern part of America, which was the area of higher civilization, central part of America, and no chance for proliferation of innovation of Mayas. Why? Because the domesticated animals and domesticated plants not possible proliferate north, east one, neighbor, west, uh, south one. Why? Because the geographical uh, environment basically different. Innovation of Maya, Toltec, Aztec, Zapotec uh, civilization function only very close, narrow area. In the case of Europe, in the Euro Asia, uh, very easy proliferate in same 
by the geographical area each of, each of innovation. Okay, uh, the starting date, the first possible starting date of European civilization, when Han tribes crossed on the Volga River. Volga is the longest river of all of Europe. Okay, the next possible day, the first date, first year of invasion on the direction of Eastern Roman Empire to the direction of Balkanic Peninsula. The next one, the ruling years, the greatest uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese, greatest Han king, Atima. Recently, in, for example, international life is, uh, uh, is a synonym of cruelty and, uh, and uh, fierce fool and, and aggressivity and everything uh, is Attila, name of Attila. I was very surprised. Uh, my hobby in my family, irony. It's quite exceptional uh, because I have three daughters and my wife. Everybody hates, only me. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, my, my son is it's, it's a great macho, it's a great uh, 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 women beating person. It's eight years old only. And he was sure that irony is a male job. And ask a small toy of irony and try to repeat my. Yeah, because later uh, his friend told him it's not true. But during the night irony, I quite regularly I am watching a sport television. And for example, uh, after uh, midnight, quite general show a lot of uh, box uh, uh, play. And for example, one uh, Chinese uh, box player had a trunk, uh, a trunk uh, a sign that I am Attila. Because it's gen quite general, if somebody would like to uh, demonstrate that I am a, a fierce school and uh, cruel, this is the synonym of Attila. According to Central Asian civilization, Attila meaning basically different high civilization, and uh, uh, talented uh, ruling, uh, and so and so. It depends on the point of view. In Western Europe, it's a cruelty. In Central Asia, it's a talented model of talented ruler. Uh, okay, Attila. These are the potential starting date of formation of European civilization. Why? Because the Han start the collapse of Roman Empire. Okay. And the last day, the uh, Battle of Catalonian Plains. Do you know second name of Attila? Sorry? Second name of Attila. No, no, no. Uh, the etymology of second, basically different. But there is a legend that uh, 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 Attila, after his death, buried somewhere in the Great Hungarian Plain. But it's very difficult to verify because this is a great ambition. A lot of archaeologists find. Uh, the place of uh, a burial of, uh, of Attila, but no result until now. Okay, uh, so uh, with invasion of Hans, because the Han tribes pushed the great German tribes westward. This is the uh, map of great migration. The great migration. A lot of German tribes moved westward, and not only westward, occupied whole of the Western Roman Empire, but even occupied northern part of Africa. And very interesting and very surprising, who visited in the uh, northern coast of Africa? Nobody? I call your attention, one German tribes, one Teutonic tribes, wanders. Wanderers occupied northern part of Africa and assimilated the local people. In consequence of one law, German assimilation, one person, one person of northern African population, blonde hair and blue eyes. In the genetic pool of northern Africa, left the fingerprints, even the Teutonic. German tribes too. Okay, turn back to the story. This is the first possible starting date of uh, uh, European, uh, European civilization. The second possible starting date of European uh, civilization, division of empire, division of Roman Empire. The last uh, talented emperor of the Roman Empire divided two parts of Roman Empire, eastern part and western part. 
It's very, very uh, uh, seminal invention. Why? Even now, the modern management using the technique, the simplification. For example, one organization is very complicated, simplify. And the form of simplification, half. Half simplification. Uh, somebody know the flatback of Miller. Miller. Who? There is a, a, a student who are uh, learning uh, psychology. No? No? Nobody. Okay. Uh, there is a, a quite general psychological concept of flatback of Miller. Miller, an uh, American scholar. Miller analyzed which. Uh, which uh, circumstances influence good decision. Good decision, for example, in economy, good decision, uh, for example, uh, in the guiding of army, good decision of organization of bureaucracy. And the conclusion of Miller, after a lot of experiment, there is a flat bag, a flat bag, this is a flat bag, which is the flat bag. It's a flat bag, for example, a flat bag of money. Flat bag of money. For example, the coins take into the flat bag. Inside them, the flat bag of Miller means seven, the magical number seven. This was the title of his study. Magical number seven. One important seven. Seven plus minus two. <coughs> the conclusion of Miller was for good decision, necessary, create a situation. One decide, decision, one, uh, uh, one a person who has to decide, has to recall, calculate less than seven items. If very talented, possible pass two, nine. It's not so talented, five. Look at, for example, army. Uh, somebody in the audience uh, served under the flag on army. Nobody? Yeah, but unfortunately I, I serve. Uh, this is the prison experience. Nobody would like to go to the prison, but may earn uh, so great experiences, no any other places. Okay, I participated in uh, military service and uh, very interesting organization of uh, army. Basically, the smallest, uh, smallest unit are fire teams, are fire teams. The fire teams in the Hungarian army, seven person, seven person, three fire teams form one platoon, three, and uh, until the until the uh, squad, the next one I remember the squad, three the platoon form one squad, and this is the rhythm, this is the this is the logic until the until the army. Each general, each, uh, for example, uh, military leader had to calculate, had to take into, uh, 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 take into, I don't know, take into consideration, sorry, take into consideration 7 to 3, 11. Why? Because the feedback in the military situation, on the battle, it's very close. If organized more complicated manner, lost the battle. It's very simple. And uh, Theodosius used this mere flatback logic. Not scientific, scientific level, it's everyday, everyday practical experiences uh, manner. Simplified the guiding structure of Roman Empire. The next great milestone of collapse of Roman Empire and formation of Europe are Sacco di Roma, Sacco of Roma, plundering of Rome. Visigoth king, Alaric I, plunder with the Visigoth army, whole of the Rome. Why great milestone in the Roman history and early uh, Middle Ages? Because for 8,000 years, nobody step, one person step into Rome. Uh, probably 
lot of people from the audience watch uh, how the name is uh, uh, not Terminator is uh, uh, Russell Crowe starring in this movie Gladiator, Gladiator not Terminator they're very close to each other but Gladiator uh, who watched the Gladiator? ok, majority of, of the audience you remember to the story no armed person no legionnaire step uh, uh, my step into the wall uh, of uh, Rome. Why? Because only the bodyguards of emperor might wear arms, no any other person. And the last plundering of Rome happened in the fourth century by Gauls, uh, 308 uh, 87 before Christ. And for eight centuries, imagined the people, inhabitants of Rome, it's unhurtable, unhurtable person. This period closed. Moreover, population of Rome on the heyday was 1.5 million persons. 1.5 million persons. The greatest population until the 19th, 19th century, until the Industrial Revolution. The next uh, and the official day. Uh, in the history of the guidebook of collapse of Roman Empire is uh, 476. This is a very peaceful uh, event, very peaceful event. What happened? Not even in Rome, it happened in Ravenna, north, northeastern part of, uh, of uh, Italian peninsula. The last emperor, it's a very young person, Romulus Augustus, he was uh, uh, 15 years old deposed from the throne. It's very peaceful. The gadget of ruling, the crown and the sword and, and, and uh, the coat, uh, asked by Odo Acker, it's a German uh, general, and brought the gadget of ruling to the uh, uh, port of Ravenna and sent to Constantinople with the message we never would like to elect a new emperor. And closed, officially closed the uh, epoch of Roman Empire. And why this even peaceful event became the official closing day of, uh, of uh, Roman Empire? Because during the 19th century, by chance, on the 19th century, the most important, most influential part of, uh, of history was the history of right which is the legitimate or which are illegitimate. And he was the last legitimate emperor. And the historian of art declared this is the last year of official legitimate uh, Roman Empire. By chance, by chance. A lot of events in the history, a lot of uh, conclusion of history uh, happened and became a general norms by chance. It's not a final uh, right and final uh, the conclusion of science. Okay, and the last official date of formation of European civilization, one date, one starting date of Muslim calendar, this is the Hijra. Hijra when uh, Muhammad and his followers moved from Mecca to Medina. It happened very far from Europe. Why became a milestone of European history? Because this event reformed, reconstruct whole of the history on the peripheral area of Europe. Why? Because the troops of Prophet, troops of Muhammad, occupied not only Arabian Peninsula, not only Central Europe, but occupied <coughs> Near East, later Anatolia, occupied whole of northern uh, Italy and for centuries even in Iberian Peninsula. Why important? Because in Phoenician age, in Greek period, in Roman Empire, the candle of civilization was a Mediterranean Sea. And in consequence of uh, formation of Muslim civilization, Circumstances basically change. Why? Because southern coast, 
southern coastal area of Mediterranean Sea became a part of the Muslim world and pushed northward a formation phase in the European civilization. And the heartland of Europe, the richest area, the highest density of population, became the boundary between Germany and France. During the Middle Ages, this area was the highest density of population. Not by chance, the majority, the majority of knights who participated in invasion for Holy Land, crusade, majority of knights came from this area. Not by chance, in Holy Land, during the crusade, named Europeans Franks. Franks, because majority of knights arrived from this area and spoke in French. And not by chance, even during the invasion against Iraq, Saddam Hussein, leader of Iraq, on the last radio speech, started Franks approaching. It's very interesting. One condition, one information, one civilization fingerprint survived one millennium. It's very interesting. Okay, uh, basically, uh, this is the last day, last possible starting day of, uh, of European civilization, the Hijra. This is the starting date of calendar of Muslim uh, uh, civilization. Okay, one concept, one theory we are using during the survey of uh, formation of the world economy system. This is the great theory of Arnold Toynbee, created by Arnold Toynbee in the middle of 20th century. Challenge and answer. Somebody know this theory? Nobody? Who? Nobody? It's a greenfield investment. Okay, uh, Arnold Toynbee wrote a list of books, list of volumes about the global civilization. Sumerians, Greek, Roman civilization, Middle Age, a lot of, lot of different civilizations. And used simple theory, which is able in Paleolithic age, usable for Egypt, Egyptian history, uh, old dynasty, new dynasty, mid, each period, and even on the Industrial Revolution. Very simple theory, very flexible theory, but very usable. According to Arnold Doyle, one person, one community, one civilization, time by time, uh, meet with challenges. For example, in the life of student, exam, taking one exam, this is one challenge. <coughs> Invasion, for example, uh, majority of audience watched, so a uh, gladiator. Gladiator started with the battle of Vindobona. Somebody know uh, which is the name of Vindobona recently? Vienna. Capital, yeah, capital of uh, Austria. Yeah. But landscape was a little bit different compared with recent conditions. Okay, and this is a challenge. Barbarian invasion. In the case of challenge, in the challenge situation, may, uh, may find three kinds of answers. The first, solving the problem with help of traditional tools. Look at, for example, the gladiator. On the gladiator, Roman Empire, under the direction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, centralized military bureaucracy, solved the situation with help moving regions to the boundary and won the battle against the barbarians and killed them and pushed back to the official fortified boundary of Limas. This is a traditional, traditional solution. Look at, for example, which is the traditional so solution of exam situation. Learning. This is the traditional situation. After learning and passing on the exam without any problem. This is the traditional first type of answer. Look at the second type of answer. Innovation. Innovation. Uh, some situations, sometimes, it's not possible to solve the problem with traditional tools. 
Look at, for example, the uh, uh, Roman Empire. Roman army of Roman Empire basically was army of peasant. Army of peasant. For peasant soldier, at least two times had to go home. On the time of, on, on the time of sowing and plowing, and on the time of harvest. In the long military operation period, it's a lot of problem. Why? Because the peasant had to go home time by time. No possibility. And this situation solved the form of Sulla. Sulla was a consul and general of a Roman state, which was the solution. Mercenary, the professional eyes of army, a mercenary, a mercenary, a mercenary time, a service time is uh, 15 to 25 years. No challenge, no problem going home. No, because there were professor, professional regional, professional soldiers. This is one innovation. Uh, in the case of life, in the, in the life of student, for example, there is a innovation. For example, three or five years ago, a pure innovation. Smartphone. Two smartphone. Three smartphones. It happened. <laughs> Once. Yeah, it is an innovation. Innovation. Because on the memory content of smartphone, it's very large. All of material is possible to take into the memory. It's innovation. And very important, I have to mention, very important the role of innovation. A uh, role of small minorities. Look at, for example, in the Roman history, unfolded the small minorities who saved a Roman heritage. The small minorities, a Roman Catholic Church. In the Roman Empire, until the high day, the best period, the Christian had a minorities. Calculate between 30 to 40 persons. And majority of Roman Empire inhabitants never, never converted to uh, uh, Christian. And these creative minority save a lot of elements until now. A lot of elements of Roman Empire. Language. Official language of Roman Catholic Church, Latin. And in Vatican State of Roman Catholic Church, there is a language commission which creates new words. There is a Latin word for iPhone, television, computer, satellite, everything create a commission according to grammatical system of Latin language, new words. Try to hospitalize a little bit, try to uh, take life language. Latin language. Legal system. Basically, the legal system of Roman Catholic Church follow the rule of Roman law. The cloth. The cloth. If we are looking, for example, the priest, the cloth following the style and the fashion of Roman Catholic, uh, of uh, 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 Roman Empire age. Very important to mention, the trousers appear after migration of German tribes. The trousers, wearing a trousers, it's a, it's a German style, German fashion. After the migration, great migration, disappeared and proliferated all of Europe. But the classical style of clothes is different. No wearing of, uh, of trousers. Okay, second innovation, and very important, the role of periodic minorities. And the third possibility, collapse, collapse, collapse. Why? Try the traditional solution, for example, like a gladiator in the Battle of Vitobola. <coughs> Try innovation, professional army, and finally, in the case of Western Roman Empire, try everything and collapse. And in the life of student, Fate. <laughs> uh, for example, learn, not enough, and try to use a smartphone and, uh, and the sticks and everything, and fail, and fail all of the, all of the, all of the exam. Okay, basically, we are using 
four analyses these theoretical frame. First, second, and third type of answer. Okay, look at what happened in Europe after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. The first important innovation in the economic life, agrarian life, a medieval agrarian innovation. It's invented and introduced as a historical theory by Georges Duby. It's a friend and colleague of Fernand Brother, a great generation in the middle of 20th century uh, unfolded in, the, in, the, in France and a uh, lot, of, lot of great scholars work together. It's a great way. It, this is the same situation, whole of the whole of the history, the innovation, not in the same rhythm, appeared in different periods, but appeared in vain. In vain. Concentrate some period and later it's not so concentration of innovation. It's happened in the French history in the middle of 20th century, a uh, tenth Super excellent scholar lived and worked in France. Okay, he described first time that in the Middle Ages appeared and unfolded a medieval agrarian revolution. The key innovation, heavy plow. I will show to you picture and uh, a movie how function the heavy plow. The second one, rotation system, two field and three field system. A new form of harnessing of horses. The draw power increased this one. Okay, which was the basic reason of, uh, of necessity of medieval agrarian revolution? Because the landscape, the physical environment, basically different in the mid, in the Mediterranean basin and the continental Europe. In Mediterranean basin, unfortunately, the color not the best uh, in consequence of beaver. Uh, in Terra Rossa, it's a red soil. Somebody know why name to red soil? It's a quite general in the uh, Mediterranean area, red soil, terra rossa, which is the reason. Why unified the color? Nobody? Geographer in the audience? Yeah, the basic reason. <laughs> this is the Mediterranean Sea. It's simplification. Africa, Europe, <laughs> Red Sea, and which is the dominating direction of wind? This is the dominating direction of wind. And this area, a Sahara Desert, very dry region. And the wind from the huge surface huge landscape of Sahara moved and floated and fl fly a lot of small pieces of dust. Very high iron contents. And this floating, floating uh, uh, material is covered as a layer all of the coastal area. Therefore, the color, different structure, but the color is the same. It's possible the Hungarian student know the name. It will happen if red, red snow will uh, fall. You know? Red snow. When happened the red snow? When the strong cyclone, Mediterranean cyclone, moving the red dust from Sahara Desert to Carpathian Basin. It happened one uh, during one decade once, not so frequently, but each generation. It's very easy to realize, for example, on the windscreen of, of, uh, of car, time by time may happen that floating a uh, valley of uh, red cover, red uh, dust on the screen. Okay. So, terra rossa, peculiarity of terra rossa, very light, very easy to plow. A light plow, scratching plow, enough for agrarian work. But, in the case of Europe, the dominant form of soil is a brown forest soil, which compared to after the hewing down of uh, trees, 
brown mid metal soil, very compact, interwoven a lot of roots of bushes and trees, and very difficult to plow up. Therefore, had to invent new form of plow. This is the asymmetrical, asymmetrical <coughs> heavy plow, which was able to scratch the soil and turn up the soil. Okay, look at one movie about it. <laughs> How function the heavy plow? The blood revenge. The blood revenge. Okay, turn back to the story of, of heavy plow. Uh, heavy plow, with the innovation of, uh, of heavy plow, uh, according to recent result, actual result of historical research, uh, named to Slavic people. Slavic people, the Slavic homeland located to the uh, eastern, east western, uh, northeastern area of Europe, between Baltic Sea and uh, and uh, Carpathian, uh, Carpathian Mountains. This area, from this area, in the sixth century, moved the Western Slavic people westward, like for example Czech, Moravians, and Polish. Eastern Slavic people, Belarusian and Russian and Ukrainians, the eastward, and the southern uh, Slavic people, Bulgarians, Bosnians, Serbians, Croatians, moved southward. But basically, these are the homeland. The innovation of uh, 
heavy blow up here in this area. My question, my guess, how proliferated Western Europe? Because in Eastern and Central Europe proliferated by Slavic people. How exported? Not only the heavy plow, but using of technology of heavy plow to England, to Scandinavia, to France. How? This is the question. By the Chinese merchants. No? With slavery. With slavery. Because the German tribes, for German tribes, the model was the Roman Empire. The free Roman citizen never had to be work. No. The free people, very interesting the position of the verb. In the antiquity, the condition of full citizenship, political, economic, and social right, it's open people who not necessary to work. Recently, in the modern society, basic condition of full citizenship, political, economic, everything, the work. Therefore, the relation to work, century by century, epoch by epoch, changed. In the antiquity, the work-like situation, the optimal. This is the modern society in the modern age. The work-like situation, the best way to underclass status, social status. Okay, turn back to the story. Why is slavery? A German tribes try to follow the lifestyle of Roman Empire. How possible for Roman Empire life Thanks. Necessary slaves, slaves who are working in farms, who are working in factories everywhere, but no, no slaves. For catching the slaves, necessary had to organize military campaign against the Slavic people. Why? Because a Teutonic tribes, a German tribes, converted to Christian religion, Christian belief. And Christian people, not possible to take a slave, prohibited. But in Eastern Europe, the Slavic people, Slavic tribes, Slavic folk, live in paganism. It's possible to take a slave. Not by chance, which is the name of slave in English, came from Slavic. Somebody know in French? Who have to tell a slave? Esclam. Esclam. Yeah, the same language, communication logic, like, like for example, in Hungary, a small market named Chinese market. In, in Saget, for example, Cherepen Shore, it's not far from the downtown, there is a small market. It's a mixed market. Named Chinese market. Majority of, uh, of uh, trader, Vietnamese, came from Laos. Yeah, but the general brand, the Asian people, it's the most highest number, Chinese. Therefore, generalized. A little bit played the same uh, language, uh, naming logic in the Middle Ages. If somebody became slave, because majority of slaves came from the Slavic folks, named slave. Okay. And the Slavic people, this manner proliferated all of Europe. And uh, look at one picture, one short demonstration about early history of Slavic people. Okay, look at the subtitle. Ekskluzivnosti so ločevali v vseh živi, ne odbiljute, ne predeli. V stoletji 
Volkswagen-Dienstgewinn Beria zur Slowakischen Postovo-Maschine des Euro-Sehen. Mit welchen Pinzellen installiert ihr, dass es der Bewegung des Sevilla und Trisney, nur die Sebel und die Jugo, nur die Sabor? It's a forest area. Okay, uh, somebody know which was the historical alcoholic beverage of Slavic people, not the vodka. It's a vodka a modern innovation. It's proliferated and so on. Okay. Which was the original alcoholic beverage? Alcoholic beverage of Slavic people. Nobody knows, not, not vodka. Vodka is a modern innovation. I don't... Beer. 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 Why not by chance? Because the beer, this is the official alcoholic beverage of forest people, forest population. Okay. Continue. The first station who named innovator of heavy plow a Slavic people. But not only Slavic people invented a heavy plow, but the Kazarians. Somebody know which name, which empire was, which nation was the Kazar Empire? Kazar. Turkish. Turkish. According to population, this is a Turkish. But which was the face of Kazar? Which is the Jews. Jews. Judaism. It's exceptional. Kazar Empire in the 6th century converted majority of Khazar Empire and the ruling uh, class of Khazar Empire converted to Judaism. My question, why? Why, why converted Judaism? No, no, no. Turkish. Tur why? Yeah. Yeah, because Khazar Empire unfolded between Muslim civilization and the Christian civilization. And for centralized political structure, very important centralizing of religion, monotheism. The monotheistic system supported the centralized political power. Three options. The first one, a Muslim, the second a Christian, and the last one, a Judaism. Why the Judaism was the best for Khazar Empire? I don't know they had some more students in Weakest one. This is the weakest one monotheistic community. Weakest. In the Muslim period, it's focused to Baghdad. This is the Baghdad Caliphate's period. And, and this is the great period of Eastern Rome Empire, focused to Constantinople. Therefore, for Turkish Empire, it's a good offer. Good offer. It's a monotheistic, but not strong political background. No danger of influence. And very interesting, probably you know, Hungarian students probably know, that Hungarian tribes lived in the frame of Khazar Empire. Um, we, are, we, are, uh, we don't know, it's uh, after Levidia, between Levidia and Atherkos, the Hungarian tribes. And very interesting, in the 11th century, had two Hungarian king with name of Old Testament. Solomon and Samuel. Exception. No any other European country were 
lived in the Middle Ages Old Test with, with the name of Old Testament's prophet or, or king? No, exceptional. Therefore, probably some element of heritage of Jude, uh, Judaism and the Jewish tradition brought from Khazar Empire to Carpathian Basin. Okay, in the Khazar Empire, in the Khazar Empire existed, this is a frame of different nations, different folks. For example, nomadic Hungarian tribes and uh, settled down Turkish people, for example, Alan community, Alan uh, Turkish, uh, uh, Turkish folks, which specialized agrarian, sophisticated, uh, agrarian activity, agrarian works, gardening. For example, in Hungarian language, the name of garden, kert, came from Turkish language, Iranians, from Khazar Empire. And very interesting, the most important words of Christian pray came from which language? Okay, this is a guess. Which language came from the most important terms? No? Turkish. The same. Why? Because a because lot of Turkish folks on the Great Step Corridor converted to different version, different direction of uh, uh, Christian law, Christian religion. And the Hungarian tribes, when moved from the Ural Mountain to Carpathian Basin, basin met with a lot of Turkish name which lived according to uh, Christian religion. And very interesting, the basic words, basic, basic Christian words, not Latin, not Slavic, but Turkish. Not Ottoman in Turkish, not Ottoman Turkish, but Eastern Turkish. Okay. Uh, about the Kazan Empire, this is the last animation. Only one minute. No. No words, only demonstration, the geographical frame and the formation of Turkish uh, Khazar Empire. Turkish Khazar came from uh, east and started the career in the 7th century, uh, converted to Jews uh, and had a conflict with Hungarians, Magyars and Vikings and finally uh, to the end of 10th century collapsed, collapsed and uh, totally disappeared the Khazar uh, tribes uh, to the 12th century, which is interesting for us. Why interesting for us? Uh, why interesting according to European civilization? Because there is one theory that a uh, European Jewish community came from Khazar Empire. Khazar Empire. Uh, probably you know there are uh, in the uh, Jews two types of uh, uh, Jewish community. The first one, Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi, you know. Ashkenazi mean Jews community which are living in Christian environment. And Safar or Sefar, Jews community. Jews minority, which are living and were lived in a uh, uh, Muslim environment. And very interesting and important that uh, recently the population, Jews population, estimated to 10 million. Half of 10 million living in uh, Israel uh, country, half of uh, Jews community uh, around the world. And 80% uh, of global Jewish population Ashkenazi. There are European Christian background. And very interesting, according to quite uh, accepted theory, majority of European-based Jewish community came from Khazar Empire. It's a very interesting question. Why? Because it's a very old question in the case of Jewish community, this is a religion or folk. If true and DNA analysis, a lot of DNA analysis verify that majority 
of Ashkenazi population that is a Turkish background. If true, it solves the problem. Why? Because the majority of Ashkenazi Jews community, according to ethnographical background, Turkish. I don't know because in the rational cognition, no final cognition. Okay, one slide yet. The two field and the free field system, two field and free field system necessary because the wheat, the dominant cereal of European civilization, exhaust, exhaust the soil. Therefore, two following years, not possible, sold on the same place the, uh, uh, the seeds. <coughs> this is the system of two field system, fellow winter crop, fellow winter crop, three field system, winter crop, summer crop, fellow. Probably you know this rotation. Uh, anyway, and the next, uh, next innovation, new form of horse harnessing. The classical harnessing, like here on the picture, this is the neck harnessing. Neck harnessing. Uh, and in the 12th century, introduced the breast harnessing. Why? Why change the harnessing system? Did you meet personally with horses? It's important. Yeah, because the neck harnessing is choking. It's choking after some uh, level of drought power, choking the neck of horse. But very interesting, this is the last guest today, in the case of oxen, in the case of cattle, water buffalo like that, even now are using the neck harnessing. In the case of oxen, cattle, and this kind of animals, why did it change? Did you meet with cattle, personal? No. no. In the next lecture, I will try one of it. Yeah, uh, because the anatomy is different. If you are looking at this water buffalo, on the back of cattle, there is one bone. In the case of cattle, the neck harnessing, not able to slide back, not able to choke. The neck. Why important for us? Because one innovation demonstrates well the nature of traditional economy. A traditional economy, traditional agriculture, traditional peasant never introduced innovation, if not necessary. Why? Because if we are looking at uh, breast harnessing, very complicated, very expensive, very, very fragile. Look at the neck harnessing, very simple. Very simple, if not necessary, never introduce innovation. The traditional economy and the peasant society, very conservative. Use the same technology for centuries. Okay, uh, thanks a lot for your attention and I read. Thanks a lot. I cried. Okay, anyway. Uh